Thank you all for joining us today. Um, I am Rula Lebekli, I'm the Director of Admissions at ACT. And today I have an amazing group of ACT students um, who will be sharing their experience with you. Um, besides doing this job for quite a few years and meeting and counseling um, students of your age, um, I have two kids who are more or less of your age and I know how frustrating and sometimes chaotic uh, college uh, search might be. Um, so before we begin, um, uh, allow me to take just a few minutes to, to give you the same piece of advice that I, I gave to my kids, the same piece of advice that I give to every candidate that I meet. Um, when you look at your options for um, uh, undergraduate studies and when time comes to make a decision, consider where you would like to spend the next four years of your life how you would like to spend the next four years of your life. You want these four years to be exciting. You want to occupy yourself uh, with uh, something that you are passionate about. You want to grow. You want to have experiences to help you mature, to help you uh, to make your life richer, to expand your horizons. So um, ask yourself, when you look for a college, is this the right place for me? What vibe, what feeling do I get from its people? So aim at meeting people from the admission staff, aim at meeting uh, current students, heads of the academic departments, and keep asking this question, sense, is this the right place for me? So without any further delay, I'll turn this over uh, to um, uh, the rest of the panelists who are, as you know, ACT students. So please uh, unmute yourselves one by one and introduce yourselves, who you are, who are you? Who would like to start? Daniela, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Daniela. I am a computer science major from Albania. I'm on my third year of studies, and I'm so excited to interact with you all. Thank you, Daniela. Who's next? Chrissy? Hello, everybody. My name is Chrissy. I'm from Greece. Um, I'm also an ACT student. I'm in my third year. I study English with a concentration in communication and new media. And I'm really excited to get to know you better. Thank you, Chrissy. Daniel? Hello from my end as well. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm a fourth year student majoring in computer science. Uh, so three more months before I graduate from ACT and uh, I can't wait to take any of your questions and be as helpful as I can. Thank you, Daniel. Katya. Katya, are you with us? Uh, she may have trouble with her connection, but we'll get back to Katya. Uh, Dionysi? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dionysis. I'm a senior studying uh, international relations. It, uh, as I said, I'm a senior. It has been four years. I have had so much fun. Uh, I can't wait to answer your questions and let you know about all the fun stuff here in Thessaloniki and the amazing experience of studying at ACT. Please, if you have any questions, I'll be very glad to answer them, just as everyone else here on the panel. Uh, so please, don't be hesitant, don't be shy. Uh, you can always write. Uh, it's not necessary for you to turn on your camera or microphone. You can just type. Uh, I'll be very glad to answer any of your questions. Uh, thank you. 
we leave some time for questions at the end. Okay, Nikita. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Nikita Triadafilidis. I'm uh... Nikita, we cannot hear you, I guess. I'll be very glad to answer any of your questions. I'm a major in international relations and political science. I don't remember if I said that. And just as my enthusiastic colleague Dionysi said, we are ready here to like answer any of your questions. We are at your disposal. It's been four wonderful years and uh, quite frankly to say, it's very hard to like leave, but you know, you know, we have to pass the flame of knowledge to the other people. So you, the younger generation, and now, as I said that, I, I feel like I'm very old, but trust me, I'm, I'm not that old. I'm quite the same age as you. But yeah, anyway, so I'm very glad to like help out as much as I can with your questions and, and uh, you know, dispose my experience to you. Thank you, Nikita. Katia, are you with us? Yes. Yep, yep I am. Uh, sorry, I am joining from the airport, so I'm, re I'm really sorry for any external sounds um, or unexpected disconnection. Um, so my name is Katya. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Russia. I'm second year student at ACT and I'm uh, majoring at international relations and political sci science and uh, my minor is international business. Um, I'm really happy to be here with um, all of you and also as my enthusiastic colleagues, as Nikita said, I'm really happy to answer all the questions at the end of the session. Okay, thank you. Kuru, here you are. Unmute, okay, thanks. Hello everybody, hi, my name is Kuru. I am currently the master's program. Kuru, I'm sorry, we have a hard time uh, hearing. Any better now? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Hell yeah. Um, hi again, everybody. My name is Kutu. I'm in the master's program at ACT for industrial organizational psychology. I've been in Thessaloniki for two years. I don't know if my accent gives it away, but I am American uh, and um, having a good time in Greece and being at the school. And I'm, you know, open and ready to share my experience with you. If you have any questions, we are reliable resources. So use us. Yeah, take advantage. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Guru. Well, we we'll leave uh, some time at the end for your questions. You can type them at the Q&A box. So this year has been an unprecedented year, quite an unusual year with the pandemic. Um, you've been studying remotely. So um, how, how did you spend this past year? What, what, uh, what did you do? In what um, uh, projects, activities were you involved? Who would like to go first? May I? Yes, of course, Chrissy. So the past year for us have been half online, half uh, in real life at the at the ACT. So we, even though we were apart from the campus and everyone who were really used to seeing everybody's friendly faces there. Um, we had other opportunities to explore that maybe we wouldn't have time to if we were at Thessaloniki. So for myself, um, I have to say that I took this time to really focus on my studies and explore uh, my potential. And then I decided to join, um, to start an internship at Dukaki Center, which is an organization that is a nonprofit um, that's at ACT based and one of the professors that teaches at ACT actually is the head of the organization so as I said I'm studying English and I was a communication uh, intern there and this has really helped me understand what I'm going to do after I graduate which I think is important because most of us have so many potential careers that we should actually get to know ourselves better in this time of isolation, which isn't, but okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. Yonisi, would you like to take over? Yeah. Um, okay, so the last year has been weird. Uh, I think that applies to any of us here, uh, whether it's the panel or whether it's you, uh, our everyday life has changed. However, um, as far as I know, ACT has always tried to um, keep the on-campus 
uh, a broad open. However, with the new measurements by the Greek government, uh, we were forced to change and uh, conduct our classes online. However, there, there has not been a significant difference. Uh, the classes are still very interactive, which uh, for the political science students, uh, since I'm seeing a lot of interested students uh, for political science, uh, you should know that the classes are very interactive. Uh, you communicate a lot with a teacher. It's like a dialectic, Socratian dialectic tactic uh, where the teacher poses a question and the student answer. The same thing applies for online classes. So uh, it has been the same for me. Uh, other than that, um, you know, uh, we are just inside of our houses. Uh, the classes are as usual. It's still very interesting, no change at all, for me at least, for our major, political science. Okay, thank you. Katya, what did you do? Um, all right, <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to clarify how many minutes do we have because I, I have a lot to say. <laughs> Try to make it as brief as possible, okay? okay. All right, got it. Um, so as everybody already mentioned, uh, lockdown have been um, pretty hard for all of us, for all the students, for the ACT members stuff. Um, however, for me, that was um, another opportunity to kind of uh, explore new um, potential in myself. So um, I had uh, so much time, so much more time than before. Um, and uh, the first thing I did when we got in lockdown, I uh, decided to uh, become a tutor, an English tutor. Uh, that was one of my uh, endeavors and I, I'm still doing it. I'm really enjoying it. I said to help me a lot to build up my confidence, to um, improve my English. So that's what I'm currently doing. Um, also, I had to go to Russia, back to uh, my hometown. Uh, and back there, I started um, to, I became a member of a volunteer organization and we were focusing on um, several events and webinars for uh, high school students. Um, basically, we were just talking about uh, the well-being, how to handle the pandemic, how to prepare for state exams and so on. Um, also, I got uh, to participate in the um, really interesting project by ACT, which is called uh, InGame, not by ACT. Uh, it's an international project, and ACT is one of the members. Uh, Ten universities are participating, and uh, that's um, a computer game. We're creating a computer game, and I'm a focus group member. Uh, that's a computer game for social inclusion and um, for... Uh, problems and global issues that basically exist um, around the world. And also, um, just recently, three months ago, I became an intern at NATO, uh, NATO Innovation Hub. And um, there are several projects, and uh, some of the students that participate in the today's uh, panel discussion, uh, they're also members of the project, but um, different, let's say, chambers. And uh, what we are focusing on, we are looking for a special tool uh, for NATO conferences uh, that will help to NATO Innovation Hub to um, attempt meetings with a remote simultaneous interpretation. So we are doing research, we are meeting with different com companies, um, we're asking them a lot of questions, we are evaluating them, and I'm really proud to announce that just yesterday, we officially finished our first stage of the project. Uh, we finished the stage of identification, and now we are smoothly moving to testing. And also just recently, just a month ago, I became a member of the Global Shapers Community. That's a volunteer organization. Uh, I'm not going to <laughs> talk anymore, I'm sorry. Um, and um, we are focusing on um, uh, global issues, uh, however, this um, hub where I'm at, I'm in Thessaloniki, um, Global Shapers Hub, we are focusing on the problems that exist within the Thessaloniki region. So for example, one of our recent projects was concentrated on issues that uh, young people uh, face at the workplace. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> You've been quite busy. Well, Kutu? Um, well, since 
things have happened with uh, lockdown and everything, it's been a very, um, yeah, interesting isn't really the appropriate word because, you know, it's just perplexing. Um, but, you know, trying to navigate and then uh, especially going through with AT and being in Greece and um, viewing it from how it's happening over, you know, in the States, it's a little bit different. And I can say that this is a little bit more better functioning. Um, I really appreciate that clubs are still available for ACT students during this time because it really helps me have something to do, whether it's painting or writing or talking about books. Um, it's just something that can bring happiness, which is something people need during this time, especially. Um, so that's just pretty much how it's been. And it's, uh, I would also say that it's been more challenging because it requires more accountability and it's building those skills a little bit quicker than somebody could have built during their whole college tenure. But uh, better, you know, early than I guess late. That's not the saying, but uh, yeah. So it's just been a, a growing step for everyone, and we're all going to get something from this. Okay, thank you, Guru. Daniel, would you like to contribute? Sure. Um, so I would say coming from 2019, where like I was in the summer uh, in a work and travel program. I think Nikita was as well had the opportunity to travel and go many places in the United States and Europe and then go into lockdown in 2020. I thought that mobility and like doing things and experiencing my last year at the city would be horrible, but it turned out to have much more opportunities than I thought because being in a lockdown, sure, there are many issues that everybody faced, but by far, I think I had the most opportunities being opened up during the lockdown because most of the companies were open to international students. You had no eligibility criteria. You had no like issues. You could do your work virtually. So I could say like being worried to uh, fix my CV and everything prior to applying to graduate school, it was the best opportunity ever. Uh, plus uh, regarding the experience with ACT, I had the opportunity to be an RA this year, as an assistant, along with Kutu and Daniela. So we were the three RAs for this academic year. Uh, even though we didn't have all the students here, at least we had the uh, campus experience. We had all the first year students, which hopefully uh, many of you here would be next year. And we helped them being navigated throughout like ACT and uh, Thessaloniki and try to, uh, be accountable and held the measures of the Greek government uh, and try to have all of those experiences without uh, depriving any of the students here to have the student experience. Uh, regarding all the academic and like professional experiences, many opened up during the summer and throughout the year, uh, participated to hackathons. One of them was from MIT where uh, we were finalists and then we were uh, the winners of the Internet Challenge there. And now I'm working on a research paper to be published in on August uh, at the MIT Science Policy Review. Uh, I've been working something that was very exciting with the International Telecommunication Union. We are a group of 24 um, research members uh, divided into five working groups for uh, representing 46 uh, countries, European countries. and. Uh, in the next two weeks, we're gonna be uh, at ECOSOC at other United Nations events regarding uh, ICT and sustainability policy making. Uh, and they want that uh, youth-centric input. So it's very nice to, to be part of uh, such events that have big impact for the next five years. And regarding my graduate school, I'm still applying had uh, one uh, recent decision from UC Berkeley where I got admitted, but still waiting for many more. And uh, yeah, I think it's yeah. been the greatest year so far and uh, it nothing really can stop you. I think that when you come to ACT, you really realize that the more obstacles you'll have, many more doors and opportunities will open to you and uh, the professors and the staff are here to support you, so. Okay. Do we have any other seniors getting responses from graduate schools? Nikita, you are a senior, right? Uh, yeah, but regarding that, I'm uh, still waiting because okay. um, I applied in Europe. So it takes like a little bit of like a month to do that. So we're still waiting for that. Wish you all the best. Okay. 
Daniel, unmute yourself. And since you are a senior, you've a senior, you've been here all four years of your college life. Uh, can you describe what's your uh, uh, typical day? Typical day before COVID, um, I would say <laughs> I would say a normal student life. Yeah, uh, uh, my first three years I've been living uh, in the metropolitan area. So I had to take the bus. I'm not really a morning person, to be honest. So I, I was pretty late in my classes, but you get used to it. Uh, and then uh, it was a pretty nice experience to be on campus, to have students from all over the world. We usually had the first two semesters, uh, American students, uh, which were coming from the abroad program. So like over 500 American students here from different schools throughout uh, the nation. And you, you had the opportunity to, to interact with them academically, professionally, or just having fun uh, throughout the weekend. Um, so it's basically like taking classes, having the break, enjoy the lunch, go back to the rest of the classes. And then the rest is creative work, free time, uh, try to invest your time to work, study or whatever. So pretty dynamic. Post COVID, it's been more uh, monotonic, but it doesn't take out like uh, the power of like studying and having the opportunities and uh, getting the advantage of uh, different experiences. So I would say it's still pretty dynamic. And now dealing with my thesis, it's more of intensive work. So you just have to keep up. It's uh, a learning experience. Christy, what was, what is your typical day? So I have to agree with Daniel on commuting early in the morning. I know it's not the most pleasant thing you can do, but that's okay. You will eventually start getting the hang of it and not being late to your 10 o'clock classes. So um, most of the times I like to have morning classes because I like to have my afternoons free. Um, so a typical day would consist of me uh, having two classes in the morning and then taking the lunch break at two o'clock. Um, I would eat lunch with my friends in the cafeteria outside. Then we would chill either at busy library or go to the student lounge room, which is a very fun area that has ping pong um, tables and video games and all that. And then we would usually go to the library or sit outside and try to do some work, some homework so that then we can go downtown and enjoy the sunset at the boardwalk or have a nice dinner with friends and yeah pretty much that's it and um, my after covid routine though uh, i think it's more interesting because now i'm back to my hometown so it can balance both uh, going out with uh, my high school friends and doing my studies which is very interesting and even though I thought I wouldn't enjoy it, I do enjoy it, to be honest. It's a nice change. Yeah. Okay. Vianesi, would you like to share? Yes. Um, so before I say anything, uh, for whoever hasn't applied yet, you should be very excited of applying. Um, and all of those that ha have already applied, you should also be very excited uh, because Thessaloniki is the, the best city that I have ever lived on. I have lived in three different cities. I have lived in, I'm from Albania, so I have lived there in Fieri. Uh, the Albanians that are listening, they know the city. And I have also lived in Athens. Uh, I was raised in Athens, I grew up there. And I have to say that Thessaloniki is by far, by far uh, the best city that I have lived. Uh, I saw a question, Kevin, about the language. You should know that Thessaloniki is a city that um, you won't have any problems adjusting with the language. Everyone speaks English. Uh, in whichever place that you go to, they speak English. Don't be, don't worry. You have a lot of students that are foreigners you, uh, from uh, in other universities. So, you know, you, you have a multicultural uh, environment here in Thessaloniki. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Thessaloniki at this point is my, my hometown, let's say. I have had many experiences here, as you will as well. 
uh, all the people that I know that have come from other countries, they have the best experiences here. Uh, so in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, student life, Thessaloniki is very dynamic, even for the outgoing uh, students that like to go to bars, even though that they are now closed, they will open up eventually. Uh, that's my prediction. But you have a lot of clubs for uh, everyone that is very outgoing. And for those people that are more uh, closed, uh, you have the boardwalk that you take a walk uh, by yourself or with uh, friends. So Thessaloniki has a lot, a lot of options uh, for you to uh, go out, uh, contrary to other cities that uh, maybe in Albania, that's my experience, those cities do not offer as much as Thessaloniki. So in terms of that, you will have a lot of fun. I can guarantee you that. Uh, and you should all be very, very excited, seriously. You should be excited. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dionys, and thank you for answering uh, Kevin's question. Um, do you have a favorite class, a favorite uh, teacher, maybe, or a favorite staff member, Katya? Um, actually, yes. Um, so it's, I'm a political science major, so my favorite classes are uh, connected with my major and uh, one of the classes I truly enjoyed so far is a uh, political theory class. Um, I took my introduction to political theory just uh, last year and uh, currently this semester I'm taking the second level political theory class and uh, there we uh, discuss what politicians and um, political philosophers of different time periods and backgrounds define politics like and how they understood political processes. Um, and um, basically, yeah, that would be uh, really helpful for uh, political science major interested students. Um, this class is delivered by one of my uh, favorite professors, uh, Dr. Kaya Tikin, uh, Sarapka Tikin. And uh, the reason um, is of course why, why she is my favorite professor is of course for her professionalism but at the same time her uh, such a humane approach to every single person she meets in her life to every single student is just satisfying like I I just love this professor so much because I feel like she feels me better than I do myself and she understands me better like I do myself there were situations when I was really shy to say something but I really wanted to share my experience my opinion and she looked at me and she's like Katya you're gonna say something I was I was shocked I was shocked literally so uh, that was that was a really um interesting story of um of my experience at uh, the classes and basically all of these city classes are really um interacting I would say also I really enjoyed my art class with uh, Miss Daphne Lampru uh that was a very interactive one um also uh, one of my favorite professors is also Dr. Gratale. Um, uh, so with uh, him at classes, we're doing baking, cooking. It's not, it's like extracurricular activity outside of the class, but still it's so much fun. And um, also we have in those debates, we have emerging classes with um, other um, other courses and stuff. So it's, it's just really, really interesting. I'm really enjoying classes at ACT. Thank you. Nikita, what about you? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Um, let's see, to answer your later question, like favorite teacher, that would be a little bit, uh, it, won't, it wouldn't be fair if I only had to pick one, because I have to tell you that, for, um, do not see this as an advertisement for the international relation department, but I'm just want to say that after being four years over here, I cannot like uh, say that one teacher is better than the other, or I have a favorite one or something like that, because all of them, have this expertise and this kind of like uh, ability to like uh, talk to you and like teach you new stuff and like interact with the class and all that. Um, pretty much like what Katya said was like very correct about the department and the classes. For example, me and Dionysis, we have a more, let's say old school approach. We have a more senior approach because we're not that fresh. So we've been here a lot. And what we have, what I have to say is like, if you're interested in this department, and for example, if you are like maybe a little bit shy, you don't talk too much, trust me, from the first year when you are in, the, in those classes, you will like forget everything like of, of like being shy and all that because 
what makes these classes, what makes the political science department like what it is, is the debates, is the ability to talk all the time and uh, like debate the teacher and uh, the other students and all that. I can I can guarantee you that if you have like some strong opinions, you can even like debate the teacher and all that, and they will appreciate that because they're waiting for students to like have their own opinions, to cultivate their own critical thinking and all that. And, you know, I cannot tell you how many times I'm just mentioning Dionys because we were together in so many classes. I cannot mention, mention how many times we were like three or four people that were always like debating, always talking, always having different opinions and all that. But yeah, if I can give you just an example, like one of my favorite classes, which is actually a very hard one, is the one that I'm taking this year, which is called the US foreign policy in Southeast Europe. So it's kind of like addresses like the problems and the, let's say that the solutions that the US foreign policy brought in the Balkan region, in the Balkan area, which you're familiar with. And I got to say that it's very hard. There's a lot of studying, there's a lot of reading, but it's very rewarding. Like my advice will be like, if you really like to challenge yourself, you should really like go further beyond, like uh, study more, like learn more and all that because your teachers will appreciate that and they will like try to like promote this idea of like reading more for yourself, thinking for yourself and all that. So I'm thinking that, yeah, uh, our department is very like, how can I say, it's very interesting, but it's also very tough. Like you have to have your own opinions, you have to have your own critical thinking and your teachers will help you for that. So I'm thinking, yeah, I don't have a favorite teacher, but favorite classes a lot. And you will, I hope you'll experience them this September. Uh, Nikita, I have a question here. How hard it is to study in English? So I, I, uh, uh, I think there is concern about the level of English. What do you think? I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, uh, do not expect, like, if you're not, let's say, American or British, do not expect to have the perfect accent. Do not expect to have the perfect knowledge. Like, for example, look, I'm, I'm from Russia and I grew up here in Greece. I learned English as all the other all the other my colleagues in school and all that so more or less there's no problem in that like do not be look do not be afraid to like talk and all that because the the also the, the staff and the professors understand that you know we are not native speakers like the, the native speakers only like you know the americans and the british that might come so they will like also help you out in like uh, how can i say uh in your writing skills and your speaking skills and all that so don't expect like harsh grades or harsh attitude towards you know anyone because they already understand that you know they're we are not native speakers so uh look trust me in the first year i remember when i was first year i didn't have like the best papers i didn't have the best participation because i wasn't familiar with the style there's the, there's no familiarity with the american system so but but you will get through it all you have to do is like understand that your teachers are not the typical, let's say, high school uh, professors. Like I remember in my high school, it was the typical, you sit down for and for one hour, the teacher speaks, 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 and then it's time for a break, that's it. It's not like that in ACT. It's like the teacher speaks for 10 minutes, then he asks a question, you speak for 20 minutes. He speaks again for 20 minutes, you speak for another 20. So there's always this interaction. They will always help you like to promote yourself, to promote your ideas, and eventually like, you know, help you with your English skills. Like, we're not a native native speaker, so you know we have to cultivate you those skills. So don't really worry about that. Uh, it's not only you; it's everyone. It's even us that are seniors over here. We always learn new stuff, so you'll you'll do great. Like uh, ACT will be the best like guide for you. Have you ever used the support of the writing center? Uh, let's see. Yeah, once uh, when I was like uh, in the first year and all that, we had like some classes. Uh, that require. Excuse me. Would you like to say a few things? What is the writing center for students? I think that would be interesting for a number of them. Yeah. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong. If I remember correctly. So when I was there, I had like some help from uh, a certain professor. Her name was uh, Elsa Tsakiroglu. She was like the in English uh, in English uh, in English department, and she was like uh, helping students, you know, with the first year, like English 101, English 102. So, you know, I, I, I had some knowledge of English, but I didn't have this knowledge of like how to write, let's say, in an academic way. So the writing, the writing center over there like helped me, you know, you book an appointment and they go, go with you thoroughly how exactly to write, 
what exactly to do like you know you have like a scientific paper to do so how exactly do you read that paper what how exactly do you cite this paper what kind of professors you have to like you know uh, console and all that uh, how do you use our academic books and all that so the thing is like you know they will not ask you from the first year to write an academic paper that's for your fourth year but the, like intense for the fourth year but at the beginning you know they will help you to understand like you know it's not just like copy pasting or like writing uh, whatever comes in your mind they will help you to like to study more to search more to research more so the writing center for me was very helpful because it helped me understand you know what it means to be a college student like there's the fun part but also the fun the, the part that you have to work and uh, they, all, they always help you to go through that like you will never be alone like if you need their help they will always be there you book an appointment and any questions over there will be answered great this is really very help, helpful uh christy would you like to describe a moment a memorable moment of your uh, college life something that you know you you carry it with you and it, it it stays with you sure yes so i have many memorable moments but um, one of my favorite ones was when last year we, I, I, I'm a member, I was a member of the basketball team, ACT's uh, women's basketball team, so we were very close uh, with the girls there, some of them were study abroad, so we lost them, but some of them were regular students, and I remember us uh, on the bus, uh, we were going to Halkiviki to play on a tournament there, and we had so much fun after the game. Uh, we were then cheering for the men's basketball team and we had such a good time afterwards we were all went outside to have dinner and I have so many amazing memories we were playing specific songs that i play nowadays when i want to hype myself up so yeah that's one of my memories okay uh daniel what about you Okay, so uh, it's been four years, so I don't even know uh, how to rank all those memories. Uh, but I would say it's definitely many. If I start from this year, it's definitely being an RA. It was a new experience. Try to integrate students and not in normal times. We know it's, it's Sorry, COVID. Would you like to, to explain what an RA means? I mean, it's uh, <laughs> quite yeah, cool. yeah. So an RA is, uh, yeah, an RA is a resident assistant. You're basically a student, but uh, you go through a selection process from the student services office and uh, you're being appointed to, to help guide the first year, the freshman students that come at ACT. Um, you try to accommodate them. Uh, you make sure that all their experience throughout you know, on campus is uh, smooth. If they have any issues or like uh, any problems, within themselves or uh, with roommates, stuff like that. You try to organize events like barbecue events, I can recall, or we just go to the beach and play different like activities. Um, like basically try to make uh, the life easier for the freshman uh, students and to be the point of reference for any issues that they might have on campus. Um, yeah, as I can say as simply as I can. Uh, so this was definitely a learning experience, a very nice one. I had not only just to be um, for the students, but also interact with the students and be part with their activities. Uh, I'm sure that uh, that's the case for both Kutu and Daniela here. And uh, I would say many more memories with my classmates, with other students, like uh, spending our weekends together, uh, just going to different uh, events and places at Thessaloniki. You definitely won't get bored to the activities here. It's very dynamic. Like you once will have something in downtown uh, place, something by the board book or something from uh, the Aristotle University. Like there are different things happening all over the city and you, at some point you'll just won't be able to keep up with the different events. So you just have to choose. Uh, so I would say it's, uh, if I have to describe my experience and the memorable moments is that being dynamic and having to choose. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Leonisi, what about you? What about your memories? Um, okay, as all the other students said, uh, I have a lot of memorable moments. Um, I would say that the, my most memorable moment was the first day 
uh, at ACT. So I was never on a college campus. That was my first time being there. Um, you know, uh, you most probably have seen the pictures of the college campus. It's great. Uh, you have a great view. Um, and you have the cafeteria in which you can uh, relax uh, during the breaks of your classes. And the mo most memorable moment was when I first stepped on uh, the ACT campus and I saw so many students. And it's not only students from the Balkans and students from Greece. Uh, you, should, you should also keep in mind that the ACT is very closely uh, cooperating with other colleges in the US and there are a lot of exchange programs. So you have a lot of student uh, bodies coming from the US and living in Saloniki, uh, coming at the ACT campus and being in your classes. So you should expect a very uh, rich envir environment of uh, different cultures. So uh, I would say that's my most memorable moment, the first day at school that I saw so many people, so many cultures. I got to speak with a lot of students and that set the ground for my, uh, for my development as a person. Because when you get to talk with people from other countries, that's when you open your horizon and you know um, you see things from a different perspective something that if you stay in your home country you will not be able to uh, to experience so coming to Thessaloniki and stepping your uh, your feet uh, on the college campus uh, I'm I I guarantee you that you will feel the same way as I did to experience that, it's a great moment seeing, the, seeing so many people. Uh, so I hope that each one of you uh, gets to experience the same thing uh, as I did. Uh, Dionysio, what can a student do over, uh, over a weekend? Sorry, what was the question? What, what can a student do over a weekend? Or what do you do normally over a weekend? Uh, as I said previously, Thessaloniki is, it's not, it's not a huge city. I would say it's an in intermediate between a, a metropolitan city uh, like Athens. And uh, I, I don't wanna say a village, but it's something in between. Uh, Thessaloniki is characterized, I have to say this by its student body. Uh, Thessaloniki is a city full of students. So wherever you walk in Thessaloniki, you'll see people of your age. Uh, that's really important. It makes you feel really well. Uh, and over the weekends, uh, prior to COVID, uh, over the weekends, uh, Thessaloniki has a lot of bars. It has a lot of clubs, uh, which I'm pretty sure that you wanna go to and have a and engage with that. You can walk if you are not into clubbing or going into bars. You can have a walk by the boardwalk. There is a huge boardwalk at the sea. Uh, you must have seen the pictures. It's different seeing the pictures and different. Uh, in it's, it's a different experience walking there. There are so many people there. Uh, it's a long walk. Uh, you must expect that, uh, but it's very worth it. So. Uh, for the students that like to go out, you have a lot of options. You have a lot of parties that are being thrown around. For students that are not into that kind of lifestyle, you can just have a walk or you can go off. Oh, Thessaloniki and Greece in particular has a lot of cafeterias, a lot of cafeterias. So you can always go to a cafeteria with your friends uh, and keep in mind that uh, a lot of students uh, sit around in cafeterias. Uh, or walk around in the city, so you feel a lot. Uh, you feel a lot of joy uh, being in Thessaloniki and going out over the weekends. Okay, we got it. Uh, Thessaloniki fun. We we realize that. <laughs> Good. What about you? Step in here. Sorry. May I step in here just to say something? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So um, what Dionysi said about Greece. Uh, it's very true and I also wanted to say that just because all cities are not metropolitan cities it's very easy for you to go around so field trips is a must and when you come to ACT and live in Thessaloniki 
most of the cities uh, that are of importance are very close to Thessaloniki. So you can visit Athens with a plane, or you could go uh, on a hike on Mount Olympus, which is another one of my favorite experiences. So I think you can really move around. Yeah, Pozar, Hot Springs, Kavala, Halkiviki, very close, huh? within one hour. Kutu, would you, would you like to add anything? Um, yes, so on weekends, I typically become a professional juggler, which as you become an adult means a good time manager. Uh, so I like to try to balance like my studies and everything that I have to do for whether it be being an RA or working in the enrollment office like I do or, you know, again, studies. But I want to like, you know, still have fun with my friends and yes, things might be closed, but uh, Thessaloniki is just beautiful and wherever you look, you, it's so beautiful that you just want to make it like a desktop of your uh, laptop so I just like walking and then seeing these like beautiful peaks of the water as you're going on the hills so that's very fun um besides it being a walkable city it's very lively uh and I definitely used to take advantage of the ACT field trips that the study abroad students would go on that I would also attend so we'd go to Meteora, Mount Olympus, Pozar Hot Spring or Yanana and that should be available as you know COVID alleviates um but yeah that's typically what a weekend will look like just a bunch of crazy fun things in Greece and, you know, being a student. Thank you. Uh, what about extracurricular activities? Daniela, would you like to elaborate? Yes, not, sure. Non-academic stuff. Okay, uh, well, it's not entirely non-academic. Um, well, the work I'm doing in, uh, I'm doing at the moment is concerned with supporting diversity and inclusion within the tech uh, community of our college. Uh, when you first come to ACT, if you're a computer science major, you might have it a little bit difficult to learn programming and uh, get started with programming languages. And I know a lot of students had it really difficult because programming is a whole new world and it's nothing similar to anything you might have done before. Um, and um, I decided I, I really love working with data and I'm also thinking of doing a master's on data science. So I decided to create um, a data science club at ACT. Um, it's mainly for girls because I want to improve diversity and the work I want to be focused on is just uh, um, helping underrepresented groups of people be more involved uh, in technology. And uh, the club might help you uh, get started with programming always in the context of data science and working with data. Um, additionally, uh, I might share my experience. I've had uh, professional experience working in programming projects, mainly uh, open source projects. And uh, I believe I can, um, I can truly support the tech community through uh, through sharing my knowledge, sharing my experiences, and mainly the technical uh, part of things because I believe, well, ACT is a liberal arts college and uh, sometimes you might feel like you are taking too many GRs, but in fact, they are really important as well. So uh, they really help you get better at acquiring technical skills like they did for me. And there are all, also so many other interesting uh, courses. For instance, I'm taking nutrition this term, which is amazing. It has taught me a lot of things about how to eat healthy and um, how to better balance, uh, you know, the college, uh, college life because it might become a little bit difficult to, you know, be healthy and study while also programming because programming might get a little bit uh, stressful at first. So yes, that's that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm really interested in, in helping people learn programming and uh, um, improve their technical skills. Well done, Angela. Christy, would you like to add something? Sure, so I'm really into art. I enjoy creating any form of art. So uh, I'm part of the photography club at ACT. Um, being part of the photography club is amazing because you're at the same time, you're part of other clubs without even knowing it. So for example, as Kutu mentioned before, I used to go to field trips to take pictures and videos and then upload them. 
Uh, so basically, I was something like a social media manager, of course, in comparison with uh, Maleas, which is uh, works at International Programs Office. Um, we would even make contests and uh, go all out. We, we had in mind to create a very big photo contest, but then COVID hit, so next year it's okay. And also, I was a member of the volleyball team first year. I didn't even, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I wanted to work out. But second year, I decided uh, I enjoy being part of the basketball team more. And I wanted to say that if you're into athletic activities and sports, uh, there are many options. Uh, there is even a lacrosse team. And I experienced my first lacrosse game uh, last year. It was very enjoyable. Kutu was there. We were uh, covering the event by taking photos and it was really fun. And also any type of activities you're into, you can just talk with um, someone like Kutu or uh, with your IR, I don't know, any of the students uh, basically to create uh, a club that fits your own interests. Okay, Daniel, would you like to say something about extracurricular activities? I think I have some internet difficulties or not. Can you hear me? Can you repeat? There was a uh, sound. Daniel, are you with us? Okay, it seems that he has a problem. Uh, okay, uh, Leonisi, what's your favorite spot in Thessaloniki? Um, I have a lot of spots. Of course. Uh, but, but I have to say that every day that I wake up, even though it's a coronavirus situation, um, you can always take a walk where you can always go outside of your house. So at this point, my favorite spot in Thessaloniki is the boardwalk. It's uh, right by the sea. It's a place where you see a lot of people, something that we have missed a lot during this pandemic, uh, the social interaction and uh, you know seeing the faces of people, of different people around you. So I would definitely say that the best part in Thessaloniki at this point for me is the boardwalk. Um, another reason is that uh, the days are getting, um, um, it's getting darker later here in Thessaloniki. So you can always go out and, uh, you know, stay outside for more. And uh, it's always sunny here in Thessaloniki. The weather is great. So yes, at this point with the coronavirus pandemic uh, being here, uh, my favorite spot is the boardwalk uh, here in Thessaloniki. Okay, thank you. Nikita, are you with us? I think so. Am I? Yes, you are. Okay, okay. Uh, your... fa favorite spot, right? That's what you said? Yes. Okay. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, I'm a person that hangs out more in like bars and all that. So, well, as much as I could. Uh, so I could say like, uh, you know, there's like places uh, like uh, in Ladadica and all that, uh, which is an area which is like full of restaurants and a little bit upper of there, there's bars and all that. Uh, I think I will better like maybe generalize it so that people know what to expect in Saloniki. So in my experience for living for so many years here, I think that, for example, if you have in your mind what Greece is and, uh, you know, in your mind comes like the movie Mamma Mia and like, people dancing all the time and eating food and all that, you will find places like that. You will find taverns like that. If in your mind, uh, Thessaloniki is a place where you hang out during the night until the morning in bars or in clubs to dancing and all that, you will also find that. If you don't like, you know, big places, crowded places and all that, and you want just like uh, quiet afternoons and I don't know, like, you know, as, I don't know if you might have an interesting photography, you want to photograph place, you want to like, just like, walk around and all that there are also like those places in the Saloniki because it's like so diverse it's like there's everything for everyone so I think that's kind of like the best thing over here even if you're like a very outdoors person or a very indoors person but I would just say definitely for me the favorite places are like in the center over there 
because all of a sudden you have like this mix of like modernity and like the typical Thessaloniki style. So, you know, you, you might drink a coffee or drink a drink and uh, just across you, there might be like an old church from like the 12th century or something like that, that is still intact. So I think this kind of like gives a very nice feeling of like uh, Thessaloniki, like don't, don't forget, there's, there's a reason why we are called to be the gem of the Balkans. Uh, and this is true. I mean, once you see it, I would like for you all to experience that. And as I said, you are very lucky. Like this COVID will end, so don't worry about that. September, once you're here, I see a lot of questions. I see a lot of interest. I'm sure you all will come here. Once you see it in September, you will experience that. You might wear a mask, but no, no worries about that. Everything else will be exactly as I say. I, I can promise you that. Thank you. Katya, are you still with us? Okay, sure. thank you. Why did you decide to join APT, Katya? All right, um, that's a good question. <clears throat> um, so firstly, I would like to start with the fact that I have finished um, my high school in uh, United States of America. I, I'm sorry, there, there have been um, an arrival right now, so it's really noisy. Sorry for any external sounds. Um, so yeah, I finished my high school in, in uh, United States of America in the state of Kansas. And obviously I really wanted to stay in States and continue my wonderful American education because I was um, really satisfied with that. Um, however, that was uh, a very difficult task for me, I would say, uh, to find a great and affordable program. And uh, it was due to the reason that in the United States, they don't really provide many grants and scholarships for international students, uh, for foreign students. So uh, I gave up on that at some point, to be honest. Um, however, then one of my friends, she told me about such a great opportunity as um, ACT, which is located in the sunny Greece by the sea, which I always uh, dream to live by. Um, so, and uh, later on the ACT website, I had read about the program for international relations and political science major. And I was really surprised with its diversity and the variety of courses it provided. And I also find, found an article about an ACT student uh, whose name was Karina and uh, her achievements just satisfied me. I was just like, wow, that's such a wonderful student. So um, I wanted to be uh, like her. I, I, I don't know, um, I would say, but she was um, like one of the triggers. And uh, also my friend, she told me a lot about professors, about campus, about activities. And I literally fell in love with the place without even being there, without even visiting a city. And <clears throat> the fact that ACT is also accredited by um, Open University, uh, which is in uh, Great Britain. Um, and we receive some of the classes from Open University, which allows us after all to receive a degree with um, American British degree, like a double diploma. Uh, this was a, a fact that just uh, attached me to ACT from the first sight. Uh, that was um, the main reason why I decided to apply. And um, even though ACT was a really great opportunity for me, that was still uh, a bit costly for me. So um, I was worrying about that. However, later ACT provided me with um, the academic scholarship with a grant uh, for my studies. Um, and I was really happy and excited about that. And um, I just decided, okay, he let's join ACT and to be honest I did not regret because ACT is such a wonderful uh, place for um, person that basically uh, forces you to develop to improve yourself um, yeah that's it thank you Katya Daniel what about you why did you decide to join ACT yeah uh, apologies for disconnecting I just reconnected with my phone um, so for me it's uh, so I was as a high school student in Albania, and uh, I initially saw for options in Albania. So I, uh, there is something that you do a test on your final uh, school, like uh, called mature exams, and uh, you have to, to cast your 10 choices. Uh, I was, I had a pretty good GPA, so I got the 10 of my choices. But the thing is that when I went there and I explored my first um, year on a business informatics uh, degree, uh, it was very inflexible. 
So not only we didn't have other students from other countries, but you cannot change your major after you choose a budget, you cannot change your classes. It's pretty strict, it's pretty unsatisfying, and the experience wasn't there despite having a scholarship by the government and everything. So I, I sought for other options. And uh, ACT was definitely one of the main uh, because of all those possibilities that it gives you. I just saw that undergraduate uh, studies for me had to be an experimental uh, space where I, where I get to see different things because initially I thought I wanted to be a computer scientist and software engineer due to seeing all of those things of how like high paid jobs and like all the that you can do with uh, software engineering skills, but uh, going to psychology, ethics, computer science, and all of those other things, I saw that I can combine both my technical skills and societal aspects of it. So now uh, the degrees that I'm seeking for graduate school is in tech policy and uh, combining it with data science, um, but also in uh, ICT sustainability and everything. So everything has been due to the foundation that I got from ACT because it gave me the opportunity to basically see the different fields. I, I understood that I don't want to stay in front of the computer for the rest of my life, but I also like interacting. I also like to do policy making. I also like to do more things than just computer science. And it gives you a better perspective of, or, of just computer science is not only technical. It has societal implications and uh, the exposure of all of those other classes just give you that skill set that you feel more prepared uh, you have that ambition and uh, I got the green light and basically that's why now I confirmed that it was the best choice and uh, it was definitely worth it compared to what I initially had by at home. Thank you. Oh, can I add something since I'm a CS major as well? Um, okay, so uh, Daniel mentioned that um, the well-rounded education we get here is really needed in the computer science realm, even if you are going to be strictly interested in programming, you might as well just uh, change careers in the future. So um, I know even the most uh, genius programmers at some point in their life turn to management and policy making. So uh, computer science uh, majors should really seek for a well-rounded education and not just be focused on technical skills. And ACD offers that. I was really amazed by the vast majority of courses we take here, which are not directly related to our major, but we still can link them together and uh, become the best possible version of ourselves by combining both technical skills and soft skills and thus becoming a well-rounded uh, individual. Thank you. Uh, I have one more question for you be before we turn to the q and I see there are many questions coming in. Just one final thing. Uh, what type of advice would you give to students? Today we have a number of uh, juniors and seniors. So what advice uh, would you give them? Chrissy? Mm, that's a tough one, but I think that they should explore their options. So go ahead and explore your options, see what's out there, do your research, be excited about the next four years of your life because they really matter and they're really going to be some of your best, um, they're going to be the best years of your life. And this is not just something that uh, people who graduate say, this is reality. So explore your options, uh, go on campus tours if you can. This really helped me personally. Um, and also don't stress about your, your major because it's going to change eventually and that's okay and most people change their majors. Um, so yeah, these are my, these are my advice. Udu, what's your advice? Um, my biggest advice, it's going to sound a little weird, but is to have low expectations, no expectations, because when you walk into situations with no expectations, 
um, you leave yourself open to so much more by having these expectations, you close yourself. And I believe if you come to ACT and you think, oh, this is like America, then you're closing yourself off to the, what, 25 other countries I think that we have on campus, probably got the number wrong, but you're closing yourself off to all of those different things. And you're gonna wanna experience people, experience um, language, culture. It's just, don't, you know, don't be a hindrance to yourself. And also definitely be chill. Don't stress too much about the process. Um, it'll happen for you if you put in the work and that's really what matters. You know, just have faith in yourself and I believe in you guys. You could take the first step from here. So keep on stepping. Thank you, Guru. Okay, um, let's see at the Q&A box, the questions. Um, okay, how was your experience with the application and scholarships? Who would like to answer this question? Daniela. Yeah. Okay, so I really love the application process. It was so smooth. Uh, you do everything uh, in the ACT webpage. You just log in, then you get uh, a code, and later on, you just add your documents there so you don't have to, you know, email back and forth with offices to get uh, documents and stuff like that so everything is really straightforward in my opinion and i really love the fact that everything was centralized in the web page so you don't have to uh send this email to this office and later on send this recommendation letter to this other office you just put everything in the website and it's really amazing in my opinion and the admissions office is really uh, responsive when it comes to questions about scholarships and everything from what i remember from my first year so the application process is really smooth. Don't don't worry about that. In my in my opinion, it was great. Thank you. Uh, do you find the curriculum uh, difficult to keep up with assignments? Who would like to respond, Nikita? Well, that, that's that's an interesting one. Uh, okay, so let's let's see. In general, for all the majors, yeah, there are like quite a few assignments, but not in a way that they're like too much difficult, but someone might say that they kind of like go one on top of the other. But however, you know, as I said before, the professors are always like lenient. They kind of like understand that, you know, you have a life outside the college. They understand you have other class and all that. So the curriculum is like designed to be very informative and very, with tons of knowledge, but not in a way of like to stress you out so much to like make you th make you feel like like you, that you hate college or something like that they're like uh, the you know there's like a lenient uh, you know amount of like uh, classes there's like uh, different like ob objectives that your professors try to do and you know if i had to speak like a little bit more specifically about the ir division the political science and ir division uh look First, first year, don't worry about that. Like uh, the, the teachers just try to like make you feel more comfortable with the political science, make you feel more comfortable with the college and all that. So it's very fine. After that, once you all, once you show the an interest and in all that, they will also show an even greater interest into making, for example, assignments that are very interesting to you. Like uh, I can tell you that the curriculum changes every semester. I have I had talks with professors that. Uh, told me like how they adjust the curriculum in order to make it more interesting, to make it more, uh, let's say, approachable to students. There's nothing like dull, there's nothing like repetitive and all that. There's always something new and there's always something fun and exciting. So I will say like, do not focus so much of like if it's difficult or not, just focus in, uh, in a way of like understanding what's going on. Like they will help you to understand. So make sure you give an effort to like focus on the class and all that. And, uh, you know, they will never like stress you out. They will never like tell you to like do way too much things and all that. There's always like a balance between teaching and like giving assignments. Thanks. And, and if I can just add something very quick into that. Uh, if you think that the workload is too much, you can just drop one of your courses. It's not necessarily yet. For example, in a year, you can take 10 courses. That's what is recommended. But if, for example, in the first semester, you think one of them is hard, you just drop it. You leave it on the back load for another semester. Maybe you want to take an extra course for some another semester instead of four, you take five because you think that semester offers something that is easier for you. You can make you can take something in the others or even the summer. There is a summer uh, semester we can take an extra course 
you can choose to finish earlier or to just expand your workload. So there is definitely flexibility to that. Thank you. Uh, when do you think moving from on online classes to on-campus classes will approximately occur? That's a good question. We are hopeful that in September we will have classes with physical presence. Vaccination has already started in Greece. The Greek government expects that, expects that approximately 70% of the population will be vaccinated by November and by May we will have the first immunity wall. So we are pretty optimistic, but uh, uh, we cannot really tell. We have to make a prediction. What are some of the clubs available at ACT? Uh, would you like to mention some? I mean, Chrissy has already mentioned about... Um... I'll mention them. Oh, Kuru. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so currently for Spring 2 online, we have writing club, book club. Um, we also have a blog club kind of that you can be a part of. There's also painting and the data girls that Daniela mentioned. But during the rest of the school year, we also have basketball, soccer, tennis. Um, wow, how am I blinking? There's also a movie club, drama club. Oh, I did a drama club, a uh, dance club. And there's a lot of different options. And if there's not a club, even though we have like a vast like uh, selection, you can always start when you want. Uh, and you can do it with friends by yourself. And you can bring a little more spice to ACT. So yeah, that's Started in her own class. Yeah. Okay. We have a question about living expenses in Thessaloniki and whether they are affordable, whether you have a kitchen, whether you, cook, you can cook on your own. Who would like to respond? Yeah. Um, okay. So I see the question was made from Darian. I'm assuming from your last name, I'm assuming you are from Albania. So I can give a better explanation in regards to the differences between costs in, you know, Albania and Greece. Well, I find Greece to be uh, quite affordable. Um, I've, you know, I've noticed that uh, Greece produces a lot of products domestically, which makes uh, the prices really low. Um, and it makes the prices simultaneously low, affordable, and also the products are uh, way more healthy because they are produced in the country and later on you can just consume them um, right after they're produced. So I, I really love the food in Greece, it's fresh, it's always great. The supermarkets have so many options and I love the fact that all of the supermarkets have a web page. So uh, during my first year, I was really interested in making the financial plan so that I could, uh, you know, find out how much I, how much money I would allocate for food, other expenses, etc. And uh, the supermarket web pages really helped me, uh, you know, write down the prices and make my uh, my shopping list. And later on, just go and grab the items. I think uh, the living costs. Uh, in regards to food are similar to Albania, since you are from Albania. Uh, and uh, the food is like, I believe it's way better. I, I don't want, uh, I, I'm going to be honest, I really like the food in Greece. Greece is really well known for the Mediterranean diet and I believe you will, uh, you will really enjoy it because it's healthy and fresh food uh, and at the same time uh, affordable. Um, so yes, uh, you asked about the kitchen as well. I can give an explanation about that as well since I'm working as a resident assistant on campus. Yes, you will have a kitchen uh, where you can cook your own meals and um, depending on your roommates, uh, on the number of roommates, you might share it with other people. And that's great because you get to interact with people while cooking and uh, you know, in case you don't, know, you don't know how to cook, your roommate might help you. So. Um, yes, you will have a kitchen as well. Is there anyone else who would like to add something? 
Okay, so uh, we answered this question. If one person takes more courses in the first year, can he graduate faster? Okay, I, I will respond to that question. Yes, you can sign up for more courses in any term, provided that you have a good GPA. It's not easy to go beyond um, uh, the normal workload. So the academic year is divided into three academic terms, the fall term, spring one term, and spring two term. Uh, in fall, in the fall term, you sign up for four courses. In spring uh, one term, you, uh, you sign up for another four courses. And in spring two, which is the shortest one, you sign up for two courses. Um, yes, you can take five, five, and, and three. It's going to be uh, quite hard, quite um, um, uh, a lot of work. Uh, but you can definitely complete in uh, three years or three years and a half. And we also have a summer session, or which takes place uh, mid-June to mid-July. You can take up to two classes. It's quite intensive. And yes, you can take classes over the summer. Uh, we have a question about the work and travel program. Can someone elaborate about this program, the experience? uh initial fee inner workings i'm not sure what does that mean uh what you get to do and so forth just a few words about the uh the travel the work and travel program uh who would like to respond yeah uh, i don't know i guess also maybe i can add to that because he experienced it uh it was pretty easy actually now they are trying to do it in collaboration with act because uh, that's a separate uh, other entity that does that but um, um, it's pretty like you do the registration, you pay some fees, uh, they give you um, a spreadsheet with different options for uh, work or different, uh, because you initially give a preference of like locations and a preference of what kind of work you want to do in the food and beverage industry mainly. And uh, after you get allocated some position, you do the interview, they walk you through uh, what you have to do during your visa process, uh, during any other payments that you may have. Usually you will have uh, allocated like uh, also where to live, like the housing, maybe negotiation with meals in, in your uh, work shift. And uh, it's easy also uh, after you go there to find a second job if you're interested in that or even a third job or just uh, be enough with one job and enjoy the rest of your life there with the activities. Um, the fees, um, I don't know, it depends. Uh, uh, maybe now they will change it to COVID, but uh, I think it's similar to other countries, like it's a pretty streamlined process with any other country. And uh, it depends, your uh, air ticket, it might change from the distance from Greece to that kind of state. So uh, if you want more details into that, you can reach out personally or write in the chat. I'll be happy to help you. Okay, thank you. Chrissy, a question for you. How do you fit that much sports with your study routine? Thank you, guys. I'm not a superwoman. <laughs> I'm trying to fit in my schedule, everything that interests me. It, it's not hard, but you should be committed. So there were two times um, I remember that every week I had to stay uh, from eight o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night to campus because I wanted to go to the training we had with the basketball team. So I used to uh, move my schedule around according to the times we had practice. So I tried to not take morning classes that day and take a five to seven, let's say, so that then I could attend my practice that was at eight o'clock. So you can always uh, move around your classes and make a schedule that fits uh, your needs. And also there are many people at ACT that like uh, taking part in athletic activities. So you can always ask them and even take parts in marathons that um, are in Thessaloniki. There was one very interesting uh, marathon that took part during the night time uh, last October. And yeah, there are many events happening, so you can you can make it work if you want. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, we have a couple of questions on financial aid, so I will take over this question. 
Um, we have deep, different financial aid opportunities for students from uh, different countries. So it's best that you get in touch with the admissions office directly and find out um, uh, how you can apply for financial aid. Uh, ACT is a nonprofit institution. It has an extensive financial aid program. Uh, in fact, all uh, students on this panel have some type of um, uh, financial aid. So uh, please get in touch with us and uh, uh, we'll let you know. Okay. Uh, as far as tuition is concerned, I think there was a question on fees on tuition. Tuition is 8,400 euros plus fees that range from 100 euros to 600 euros per year, um, depending on your major. There are no other extra costs. We use ebooks, so the cost of the books is included in the tuition figure. Okay. Uh, we have a question um, how you communicate. How do you guys communicate outside campus and with the locals? Is it hard? I think we have answered this question um, already. Maybe uh, someone can um, um, uh, just say a few words again. Was it Dionysus that it's responded or Daniel? I don't remember. Daniel? Yeah, I think Dionysus, uh, Daniel that, uh, responded about this because uh, many people here uh, know English. So it's not going to be difficult for you to navigate through the city. But I would recommend since uh, ACT is multicultural and you have many Greek students, try to reach out with them and in the first places also with your RA to go in places and they will be very helpful into facilitating and uh, why not learn some Greek because we have here a Greek 101 course. Uh, it's just for you to get the basics and uh, it's easier uh, to also um, useful just to have it as an asset and as a skill. But uh, yeah, definitely generally very easy to penetrate in shops, in places, uh, in gatherings. Most of the people know English, so, so it's going to be not that difficult. Is it hard to adjust to all the expenses of college life? Um, I think we re responded to this question, but would someone else like to provide an answer? Um, I can provide an answer based off of my experience. Um, when I, like for my first four years of my undergrad, um, it's definitely a hard adjustment because, you know, usually you have your parents directly paying and thinking about all those things. And then financially, you just have to figure out this is what I have to allocate money for, for food. If I want to go with my friends, it's just um, paying attention to that. And it's not too expensive here. It's very affordable. So it's not going to be too hard to adapt. It's just something to get used to. Thank you, Kuru. Uh, is it hard to get a room in the dorms? How many rooms are still available? Actually, we will not be offering any on-campus accommodation next year. Okay, we are going into uh, breaking down the building that we already have. Uh, we are moving into new facilities, so it's going to take some time. So we are not offering on-campus accommodation. We will offer though off-campus housing. It's really hard to find accommodation in Thessaloniki, it's a university city. And uh, that's why, it, that's one of the reasons we uh, encourage students to apply as early as possible. And uh, it's going to be pretty easy for us to um, uh, provide off-campus housing for you uh, by mid June. Other uh, uh, beyond that, it's going to be um, it's going to be really hard. Uh, there's a question about COVID nineteen. If students have not received the COVID vaccine, is on campus vaccination available? No, not yet. This is um, a national initiative. Uh, uh, vaccination is um, uh, the responsibility of the Greek government. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to travel in Greece if you are not vaccinated. We do not have this information available yet. Let's wait and see what will happen over the summer and next fall. These are questions that nobody can answer at this point. Uh, I have another question about another institution. We are not responding on questions about other institutions. 
uh, as I said at the beginning of this presentation, um, check with the people of each college you are looking into, talk to them, uh, get what sense, uh, what feeling you get from them and see whether um, uh, this is something that uh, suits your personality and, um, uh, and your needs. Uh, there's another question, renting an apartment or living on campus, I have already responded to that. Is it hard to balance a job and to study? Can someone respond to that? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I think, okay, yeah, it depends. Uh, but for now, I think uh, I've even had the point where I had an internship, a work, and the studies. So. Uh, even though it's been hard at the beginning, you can really adjust with it because, uh, yeah, you have all the time available. I just, yeah, with COVID, I found out that the day has more time for you available, even though you don't really realize that uh, at the beginning. So, yeah, in my personal experience, I've had two activities aside from studies and I made it through. So uh, I think that it's manageable. Um, also, I, I had the, kind of the same experience. I'm currently, um, I'm simultaneously working and studying and last year I was also doing an internship and taking my third term of uh, second year studies. So I, I don't think it's that difficult. It really depends on how you manage time and your advisor because every major has its own advisor. And your advisor will help you adjust to that. That's what my advisor uh, did last year. I It was my first time working and studying at the same time. And uh, my advisor suggested that I take only one course uh, for that term because it would be easier for me to manage my time. So uh, I would say seek for advice because as uh, teenagers during our first year, we might not know everything. And um, getting advice from from our uh, professors and advisors it's really good but don't be afraid at some point in your life you will have to do so many things at the same time so getting that experience um, during college would be really great for you even if you want to use that after 10 years or 15. Thank you Daniela. Uh, well, we have a question about classes can you pick the classes? Um, can someone explain the GER and mandatory VS electives and how you register? Who can do that? Nikita. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, sure. So it is important to know that, you know, once your first year, you will take some classes that are like what we call GR requirements. So they're like very general. They vary from like, let's say, politics to philosophy to mathematics, computer science. So they're, they're like this general class that will give you like a taste of like what is ACT all about. So they're kind of like designed for you if you are not so sure what major you want to follow. This kind of like GR requirements will like at least give you some directions. As for the choosing of the class, look, I, I, I will say that, you know, you whatever elective you will choose, whatever major you will choose, your professor will say you have some major electives. So that means there are some classes that are like uh, you know that there are some new classes that are given every semester depending on how many people participate on that and you have the choice of either going to one class or going to another like for example in politics for in one semester you might have a class that is called uh, let's say the history of the u.s foreign policy and you will have another class that might call that might might be called globalization depending on what you know is given you can choose one or another it works both ways and they're like finally there's like what we call free electives and i recommend doing that a little bit later you know when you're like third year or something like that there are basically classes that you can take from any major even if you are for example computer science you can take a, a class that is called let's say history of literature which is like the english major take but you know uh, your professors will help you on that and they will try to give you classes that uh, let's say are not that hard meaning that they're not uh, let's say go on top of the classes that your major are the most important one especially when you're in later years when you're doing your thesis when you're doing more academic research and all that they will recommend you classes that are like 
more or less more easy that are easier than other ones so you have like a variety of choices so don't worry about that the, the professors are very helpful on that can anyone talk about oh okay you see i wanted to add something about the classes you also have the option to do a minor so even though for example you're an english and uh, major with a concentration in communication you can do a minor in psychology and computer science in anything that interests you and you will find what interests you as nikita said by uh, taking the free elective classes thank you uh we have um, a lot of questions about dorms as i said we will provide off-campus accommodation students will be staying at the same building in apartments, you will share accommodation. Um, uh, you will have your own room with a kitchen and bath facilities and a common living space um, area. There will be arrays or resident assistant assistance in these um, uh, in these buildings. Uh, again, no on-campus accommodation for the next academic year. Okay. Uh, and the final question: What are some advice you wish? Uh, you knew in your first year? What do you wish you knew in, as a freshman? Do you remember when you were a freshman? <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> but uh, just a quick response to that, I will say, uh, like, although uh, the ACT from the beginning tells you about all the facilities and the activities that you can take and all that, when you're like a first year, like, as me for example you tend to have like a more relaxed lifestyle you want to go out you want to experience new stuff and all that so my advice will be uh for example if you look behind miss label Lee, there's like this thing the library the Bissell library so uh without over exaggerating i'll tell you like this is the best place you can get you can get the information that you need from out it's kind of like the best in the balkans right now because it has such a variety of like information and books and academic researches that you can pick. So my advice will be to get to that facility and explore it as much as you can. It will be very helpful uh, to for you and for your future, you know, uh, searches. And one important thing is like it's very adaptable, meaning that you know, right now we are in a COVID nineteen pandemic, we cannot go out and all that. However, we still need the books and we still need the, the information to do our assignments. So we can use the Bissa Library again from the online uh, futures that it has. So that's the very good thing about this. It's very adaptable, as is the whole college. So I will say, get once you get in September over there, get to it, get used to it, and take as much opportunity as you can from it. Thank you, Nikita. Uh, we are running a bit late, so I'm going to end this session. Uh, for all those of you who would like to have an idea of what our campus is, we have a beautiful uh, video on our website. Uh, it's like a virtual on-campus tour, lots of, um, lots of photos. The admissions deadline for fall 2021 is March 30th. Please get in touch with us with the admissions office. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you would like to set up a virtual appointment, we will be happy to assist you. Thank you all. First of all, thanks to all uh, to uh, this um, amazing group of ACT students um, uh, who offered their time. They invested their time um, uh, on organizing this um, uh, presentation. Thank you all for being here today. Bye bye.